40 feet, two months. Yo. This is Billy Carson, a.k.a. All right. <laughs> this is Billy Carson, a.k.a. I'm for here. Bitter Knowledge. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Biohack Your Sex Life. Mm -hmm. We are about to get busy tonight about, oh, well, we're yeah. about to get busy in a couple ways. Oh, yeah. But no, we're about to talk about some, some real stuff tonight. Yeah. And uh, we put it all over Instagram. And uh, yeah, we've gotten some answers from people. We took mm -hmm. a, a little quiz today. And uh, yeah, so we're just hopping on here tonight to talk about the size matter. The size matter. So as you know, for those who don't know, no, I'm not a clone. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like, they got Billy. They got Billy. I mean, <laughs> people got to stop with the fanaticism. <laughs> once a month, we do a biohack your sex life. If you go down this YouTube account, you'll find that once every month, we have a biohack your sex life episode. Yes. And today is, is the day for our Biohack Your Sex Life episode. Mm -hmm. And these episodes have been very, very educational, and they've helped a lot of people yes. with their sex life. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And today, I mean, everyone should know by, by this time that we're here to bring real knowledge, yeah. real education, real case studies, real peer review case studies, real real statistics. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's it's... Things that that people don't talk about, right? That's what I really wanted Biohack Your Sex Life to to be about. Our first episode was about um, <laughs> what was the title of it? Uh, was it? Uh, I forgot. The it was title. real cringy. It, it was, was real, just cringy. real cringy. I think it, it had to do with real... vaginal. I think it had to do with vaginal odors, odor. odors, vaginal. odors tightness, to... which yeah. we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was it was pretty cringy, but hey. Nobody's talking about this stuff because unfortunately, and I found out from your sister actually a mm -hmm. couple nights ago that that this is very taboo mm -hmm. in the Western culture in America. Yeah. But over in other countries, it's really not because I was asking her about how she had the sex conversation with her kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, I need to, to have that conversation pretty soon right. here. <laughs> yeah. And she said that it was so easy and it was just it's it's scary for us over here because we're so conditioned that this mm -hmm. subject is Oh my God, we can't talk about Taboo. it. Taboo. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we've had quite a few episodes. We talked about male cleanliness, not cleaning your lower parts. Yeah. And Woman cleanliness. We talked about that was two separate episodes, right? So, yeah. we talked about these cringeworthy topics, but at the end of the day, it's still all about enlightenment um, because we are sexual beings. Yeah. And That's if you if you don't life. believe that, how did 8 billion people get <laughs> on this planet? Right. I, 8 billion. Billion? <laughs> Somebody doing something. I know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody doing something. And it's it's one of the biggest things in life that you have to think about, that you have yeah. to, to, I mean, it's it's everything. It's connection. And mm -hmm. you can manifest with sexual energy. You That's can right. you can literally reach enlightenment through right. orgasm. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's nine different orgasms that the body can have. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, really interesting, this stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Today's a the day. Yes. So if you're on Instagram watching, all right, we see you grammars. We got yeah. two phones live. <laughs> you have Instagram to watch this on Forbidden Knowledge YouTube account. We're yeah. going to shut off the Instagram live right now, but you got to go over to Forbidden Knowledge YouTube. So go to youtube.com <laughs> forward slash the Forbidden Knowledge, T-H-E, Forbidden Knowledge. All right. And we're going to finish this conversation on YouTube. All right. The size matter. See y'all soon. All right, sorry guys. Um, All right. Okay, we let's get to it. <laughs> we got the Instagrammers coming over to YouTube. Yes, yeah. yes. So we did a quiz today on both of our stories on our pages, and we asked people, everybody out there, now does size matter? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we got some really interesting results. Mm -hmm. I can pull them up. Okay, I emailed one to you. Perfect. That's my results. So one, 192 people said yes. 133 people said no. 
So that's very interesting to me because it's not far apart. Yeah. It's, it's not as far 50, apart. 50, that it's it, close yeah. to 50, 50. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, here's the results from my account, Forbidden Knowledge. Mm -hmm. We had uh, 119 votes said 50, you know, said yes, 57 percent and 88 votes said no, 43 percent. It's very close. Yeah. It's very, very close, just mm -hmm. like my quiz. Yeah. So that really shows me that as much as people and, and guys and women may be conditioned that, oh, size matters and it's such a big deal. And if they're not well endowed, then I don't want to be with them. I mean, honestly, that's. That's not really the case mm -hmm. when you break it all down. Mm -hmm. And the research that I did today, specifically on this topic, uh, we found that that size matters, but it's worse for size to be too big for a woman because it can actually be very painful. Mm -hmm. The woman's vagina is only four to five inches long, usually, usually, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the internal, until you reach the cervix, from entry point to the cervix is usually mm -hmm. only four to five inches. Right. So if you're ten inches out here and <laughs> you're you're hitting you're hitting the cervix, yes, yeah. and it's painful and it can actually painful. cause damage too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I mean, a, a lot of the statistics that that I found today um, had said, you know, it's it's really the length and and it's painful. So women really do not like. For it to be too big mm -hmm. because it's painful. Yeah, there was someone was saying too big, but then there's still a big that is acceptable yes. or a large or endowed, if you want to call it endowed, right? Yes. yes. And then you have from there, it goes backwards towards average heights. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was interesting in one of the scientific studies that I showed you mm -hmm. was they took uh, 100 women and they, they did this study with them where they showed them models of men these artificial models, like statues in a weird kind of way, right? Mannequins, if you want to call them that. Mm -hmm. But it had different heights, you know, very tall, uh, very short in between. Mm -hmm. And each mannequin had a different size penis. So yes. they had really tall men with really broad shoulders and built body looking strong. Mm -hmm. Some had were well endowed and some weren't well endowed. They're just average. Mm -hmm. And then they had um, short mannequins where, where, of men, all different shapes, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then they had, but even had built short men. And then they had some well endowed and some not as well endowed. Mm -hmm. And more women picked the taller, less well endowed men that looked, had wider and broader shoulders, uh, which is pretty interesting, I thought. It was kind of, but you came up, you came up with a good point on why that might be. Yeah, yeah. Well, so biologically, as as a woman, being a woman and then being a man, women look for certain things, men look for certain things biologically. I mean, it's natural within us. We're born with this. Mm -hmm. This is what we're normally attracted to, right? Mm -hmm. For a woman, it's very uh, guys like some uh, symmetry. Even if they don't, even if they don't really consciously realize that they mm -hmm. like symmetry, guys like symmetry, mm -hmm. right? Between a woman's face, your eyes are the same, same, you know, equal distance. Yes, equal yes. distance. It's, it's, it's built into our but the way we are we're attracted yes yes yeah, yeah. guys like like big breasts mm -hmm. i mean that that it, they're immediately eyes go there i mean this is biologically how we're born guys like big butts wide hips because it really shows that you know you you're fertile and you can carry, you can a, carry baby. a baby it's, it's you that's know, a that's scientific shape. study that's from yes. science not from our opinion that's yes, actually no. from real scientific <laughs> studies no yeah. No, no. So um, what I came up with, why that is, why a person would rather or women would rather choose a, a larger, taller man that's less endowed rather than a shorter man with that's more well endowed is because women, we seek protection. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's just natural. Whereas guys, you want to be um, nurtured. Right? right. Girls, women, we want to be protected. So it's important for us to to feel protected mm -hmm. when we're with somebody. That's yeah. why women are usually more naturally attracted to uh, a, a man that looks to them like From it, he their can perspective, protect like they're yes. going to be protected. Yes. I got you, right. So I think that that's just something that stems back from from why we are the way we are as right. a woman and as a man. Yeah. So, I mean, that made sense to me. Mm. Okay. What Pretty do you think about that? I don't know. What do you think about those Greek sculptures? <laughs> those, we went to Greece and I was like, <laughs> all these, <laughs> these guys are all big, broad shoulders, they built got chest, huge muscles, <laughs> big arms. And then the thing was like, and I'm like, I don't understand. Who approved this? I know. <laughs> Why is it always? 
always like that though. But in Egypt, I saw in Egypt. Oh yeah, oh, they I didn't saw play. some hieroglyphs. Listen, no, they, they just, listen, this thing was. They got the. They got, uh, that's not small compared. No, that's. I know. Small, that's, yeah, that's average. <laughs> but they got the the blue bone. They got the beluga whales. <laughs> That was crazy. I'm like looking at this one. I'm like, wow. Yeah. This is the first time I've seen this depicted that big because I've seen <laughs> these Greek statues that are yeah. tiny little <laughs> little baby. Um, I'm like, wow. And it's supposed to be that's the what what they said it was. That was the design of like the ultimate man or something. So I guess. So that's actually a thing. Micro yeah. penises. Yeah, it is. that's a thing. That's a real thing. That that they have micro penises in, in the Greek culture is what they depict of a of a <laughs> perfect man. Yeah. That man actually has a micro penis. Micro penis. Yeah. And a micro penis is actually we just found this out when you don't go through puberty as a as a yeah. young boy. Yeah. And then you grow into a man. You your hormones that are supposed to get released at puberty time don't get released. So you end up with a literal pediatric size penis yeah it's called a it's an unfortunate penis. situation for wh whoever that has, that has happened to so it happens to very, um, rare very rarely to a few men uh for every per every thousand yes but it's a rare condition and it's considered a birth defect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so you shouldn't be making fun of people and laughing at people about that situation it's something that they can't control yes but micro penis is a real thing and um and according to what we were studying today, um, you, you mean they they can be you know less than an inch, an inch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, but, you a literal yeah. pediatric penis, so that's yeah. at baby age. Right. When so the baby from the comes baby out, size, you know, it never developed from never being develops. a baby. Yes. So, yeah. so things that can help a person with with these these issues, like a micro penis, right? Mm -hmm. There are there are certain things that can help that lately but it's such a very uh rare condition yeah. that um you know we i don't think we have to dive deep into the no. solutions of that yeah. but there is something for men that's called a traction device or something i was just looking at this mm. and it will actually stretch stretch the length of your penis yeah. it stretches the um the fascia the muscles and everything over time so you'll actually get a bigger result using really? this it's called a traction device, a traction device. yes okay. and it also helps um peronis so guys that have curves uh, so it helps like straighten that back out is that curve from uh a birth defect or is that from injury so peronis you can develop all through your life usually it happens after you're 40. Mm. um you it's a disease it's an actual really? disease but guys can be born you know slightly curved to left right up down you know this it could be normal but peronis is where it happens to you throughout your life and it literally it curves like in an extreme way. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah, and so this device, what is it called again? Attraction. Attraction, attraction. device. Yeah, you can look what, it up. Is it using suction or what's it using? I think it's just stretching. It's it's a stretching device. But what's the mechanism that? Makes I didn't it? look, the, okay, <laughs> look right. too far deep into it. I'm just I don't curious, have like, no issues what are they, over like, here. I'm good, like, so. What are they trying? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I'm trying <laughs> to figure out like what are they using to stretch it. But I guess, but it's called attraction yeah, device. Yeah, I mean, if you guys. Are interested? Look up traction device. Traction I heard device. it really, really does work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's not like a lot, but it maybe by an inch or something, and yeah. and it works within the first three months of using that device. Okay. And after that, it really doesn't do much. Okay. But um, just from what I've read, so yeah. you guys look it up if you're interested. Yes, there there is that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing we learned, there's such thing as a buried pe penis. Right. It gets buried inside of a man. So. If a man is overweight, right, and the penis actually retracts and mm. goes inward, and then sometimes there is urine that gets stuck and and mm. just bacteria uh, <laughs> develops yeah. and it closes. It develops scar tissue and it closes. So it can literally get buried inside you as a man, which can develop fungus and viruses mm. and just lots of um, really, really scary stuff. Now, that's yeah. very rare as well. But if you have that issue, please see a doctor because yeah. that can be that can be an issue that can literally kill you because yeah, that's, fungus. That's, I mean, that's it, a severe problem. You yes. end up getting it having to get it removed. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Pretty, pretty dangerous stuff. It is. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's. Uh, I'm learning about this stuff, and I. I, I mean, I, it's rare that I learn about a lot of new things, but the buried penis that just completely. I know. I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of it either, and yeah. that's just so unfortunate. There are all of these things that can. I mean, they can mm. happen to anybody. These our bodies are are really interesting. Yeah. You know, things can can happen to these these vessels of ours that are that are very interesting. That seems me. more self inflicted versus the um, 
a person that didn't go through puberty. Well, a lot of this stuff, see, see, I really want to get into a lot of this stuff is self-inflicted mm. because if you're, if let's say you have erectile dis dysfunction. Now mm -hmm. this can be, this can be an issue that can be developed over time or you're born with it or something, but it's more rare in those cases. If you have erectile dis dysfunction, usually there's something going on psychologically mm -hmm physiologically, mm -hmm. or, or one of those issues. It's really yeah. not your overweight, you know, your, mm -hmm. your blood flow is, is bad. Mm -hmm. Um, your mental health is bad. You're stressed out and, and anxious and depressed. I mean, mm -hmm. these are issues that will cause erectile dysfunction. Right. So if you have these issues, then there are ways to help this. Mm -hmm. There are ways to help. Right. And also if you have problems getting it up, getting it hard and keeping it hard, there's um there's these rings that you can put at the the base of your penis that will keep the blood inside and it will keep it very very hard. So mm. there's those two for people okay. that are having issues. Um now we did look up some stats and I thought it was pretty interesting um if you want to read some of these. Okay. Um yeah. So <clears throat> the average penis size is approximately 5 inches. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. According to uh, a study published in 2015, <laughs> yeah. don't make me laugh, uh, by the BJU International Journal that sampled 15,521 CIS men. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, the vaginal canal is typically only four to five inches when aroused. So a seven inch penis is quite actually painful for many uh, vulva owners. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's just the average. This is average. And what I was also researching is that it's almost very difficult to test these things and to measure yeah. these things, because where do you even measure from right. and who's measuring? Right. And how aroused are you? Right. And it, it's just so many different factors that go into these measurements yeah. that um, like 15,000 case studies. Is yeah, a I mean, lot. that's a lot. That's a lot. It's a decent number. Yeah. So I guess long, short, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they came up with this this average length, um, and so do they. What about the the width? Do they measure the width? They didn't measure the girth, the and not in this specific study. Okay. Um, so this this is interesting. Listen to this. So a study published in 2006 by Psychology of Men and Masculinity sampled 52,031 heterosexual men and women and found that 45 percent of men wish their penis was bigger. Hmm. Yet the study also found that 85% of women were satisfied by their partner's penis size. So hmm. what does that tell you? Uh, I guess it's the equivalent of women wanting to get BBLs. <laughs> 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 the dudes are like, come on, man, we already, we already, you know, women want to get rid of stretch marks. That's just a roadmap to the glory. We don't care about no stretch marks, but everybody want to remove the stretch marks. They want to get all this stuff. So, yes. um, I guess it becomes more of an ego thing or, uh, you know, a thing where, um, yeah, it's got to be ego, right? It's ego. A competition of but who you kind of competing against. I don't know. Maybe they in fear that maybe she'll I find somebody know. with something bigger. And then, you know, society. I don't know. It's society. society. This society. is this is our problem. Society, mm. right? Because if we if we come out as women and are like, oh, I don't size doesn't matter. I don't care. You can be a little tiny shrimpy. It doesn't matter to me. That doesn't sound in society's perspective yeah. correct. That right. sounds like what's wrong with her, you yeah. know? Right, I mean, right. and yeah. a man, a man's not gonna walk around here like, oh, I got a little shrimp and I'm cool with it. Because right. society has made this so such a big thing, and that, mm. oh my God, you gotta be so big and so, mm. so the width gotta be, you know, it, it's society did this. Right. When really realistically, mm. these studies have found that that really doesn't matter. In a lot of cases, not yes. all, not, not in at all. all, right? In a but lot. in a lot of cases, what I'm looking at here with these numbers here is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. This um, is a thousand and three, three, uh, one thousand three hundred and eighty-seven sexually active women answered these questions, and this wow. is what came. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away myself. Yeah, by that, to be honest with you. Um, you want to read them? You want me to read them? <laughs> yeah. So, ninety-one point two percent of women say that size matters for sexual satisfaction with certain penis sizes being too small for them. So that um, that's saying now something a little bit different a where bit different. they want to, you know, they're not getting a, a, a satisfaction. Some of that could be the fact that the guy, if the guy isn't that large, he may not be, he may not know how to, you know, hit the, hit the walls. Now, one thing, even I don't care if you're endowed or not endowed, 
I know one thing just from, you know, my years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> Why you smile like that? If you ain't hitting the walls, you ain't doing nothing. No. <laughs> and so you got to hit those walls, man. You got to understand, like, the inside of the vagina, there are more than one G-spot. There's, there's many G-spots. For some, though. This is this is for some. Yeah. So yeah. they just did research. Usually, yes. They don't have a lot of G-spots in there? No, no, not everybody. Oh, I, I, not everybody. This is like new research. I find them all. I might be the like small percentage that has a couple of those, but uh, who knows? <laughs> yes, you do. I find yes, all of you them. You do. <laughs> um, okay, wait. I'm a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask something. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter. No, listen. So, <laughs> so this stat, right? 91.2% of women yeah. say that size matters, right? But women, let's get real. Let's mm -hmm. get realistic here for a second. If you're not working your vagina, if you're not doing Kegel exercises, if you're not doing jade egg stuff, if you're not doing these things to keep those muscles, your pelvic floor strong, mm -hmm. then, and you've had babies and babies and babies, and you're, you know, you like to have sex a lot. Your vagina will get looser. Mm. So you have to make sure that you have yeah. a strong pelvic floor. Practice using those muscles. That can increase orgasm strength. Mm. It can increase uh, lubrication. And it's just overall, you need to be healthy in that way. So everybody, even men, men should do Kegels as well. Really? Yes, 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 they should. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, men should do Kegels because it increases blood flow. Mm. It increases um, st uh, stamina. Okay. And, and everything. So women and men, it's important for us to do Kegel ex mm. exercises to keep our pelvic floor strong. So 92% of women say that size matters, but I wonder how many of those women have loosey gooseys. Mm. That's interesting. You know? Yeah. Because if you have a loosey goosey, then you can't feel much, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. So you need it to be bigger to give you the same satisfaction, same satisfaction that right. if a small one was in there, then, you know, right. it, it just, it, it matters. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Women uh, also don't like very large penises, according to this study. 83.4% of women find that some penises are too big to be satisfying. Yes. It matters. Yeah. It matters. <laughs> um, six to eight inches is the most favored penis size range for women. 43.6% uh, of women say penis size matters when deciding to date someone. Huh. Mm. That that's that's interesting to me. I, I yeah. didn't read that earlier. Well, well, they want to make sure they, you know, are satisfied. Right. They're well, always... I think it's. I mean, personally, it's the motion in the ocean. You know, mm. it's like if you know how to how to work it. I mean, and then plus, like I said earlier, there's nine different ways that this this physical body can orgasm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there are other ways except for deep in you know intercourse. Right. Yeah. 56.6% of women say that a partner possessing a penis that is too large could contribute to them ending their relationship. That's over half. That's okay, over so, half. That's interesting. Yeah, because it can become very, very painful. Mm. Wow. 40.2% yes. of women would consider cheating on a partner with a small penis. Mm. It's kind of ratchet, but yeah. okay. I can believe that happens. Mm. 47.4% of women report that penis size matters during a one night stand. Hmm. Some people just have that fantasy, you know, they just, I mean, a one night stand, if you're having one yeah. night stands, you're going to want something that, that fills you up. Right. Well, so memorable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So that, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, 68.5% okay. of women report that penis size matters in a friends with benefits situation. Okay. Uh, 64.5% of women believe that penis length and width are equally important for their sexual satisfaction. Mm. Uh, only 61.5% of women find sex with a well-endowed partner satisfying. Mm. Huh. It's the motion in the ocean, guys. <laughs> well, if you just, you know, you can have, you can just keep going in and out, but that's not, you know, that's not enough. No. You have to, you know, you have to tap the back of that belly button. You know <laughs> the saying? all wall. You got to know what you're doing. That's the all. I got a move called you the all wall. <laughs> I want the all wall today. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. It goes called the all wall. I'm tapping every single wall simultaneously <laughs> but you got to know what you're doing and um <laughs> and you can't be uh you know a two-minute man you have to learn how to uh, gain your stamina yeah yeah you, you know you have to work on yourself you have to make sure you have your stamina and then always uh don't always focus on having an orgasm every single time you have sex your job your main job as a man is to please the woman period yeah that's true that's and true. if you're focusing on getting yours 
before she gets hers or if she even has a slightest inkling mm -hmm. that you can't make it until she's getting ready to get to her climax yeah then guess what she'll never get to a climax because she's always going to feel insecure that you're never mm -hmm. going to be able to get her there mm -hmm. because she already knows at any minute you're going to explode yes and so psychologically when a woman knows that you can't hold it and you're going to explode at any moment you'll never be able to get her to that high that that true climax mm -hmm. that true orgasm because she has no confidence in you. Yeah, and it also builds resentment too, mm -hmm. and, um, subconsciously. Even if the woman doesn't want it to to piss her off, it will still cause issues within the relationship because sex is such a big part of your relationship. Period. Mm -hmm. I mean, is is huge. It's yeah. a huge, huge, oh, huge part of. I mean, <laughs> at least for me, because I like it a lot. So it's huge. I mean, we just got done <laughs> a few minutes ago. <laughs> And right before we get on this live, <laughs> I mean, I'm just being I transparent. <laughs> I needed the all wall before I got I had to in. test the studies out. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, people have cycles too. They go through waves and ups and downs of, of hormones releasing right. throughout the month. So women are hornier at certain times of the month and men are hornier at certain times of the month. True. <laughs> this is my horny time. Right. It is. It is. Uh -oh. Trying to help get this. What's going I on? I had here? something else. I had something else to add. Um, I'm trying to catch this. Uh, Y'all still here. sweating. <laughs> yeah, we are. I'm a little shiny. <laughs> like we had to air on here. <laughs> yeah. I turned the air on. Don't worry. We'll, we're going to get. Uh, they said Liz won. Liz <laughs> on one tonight. Am I? No. Uh, I built up stamina doing Kegels that your partner is offended that you didn't arrive fast enough. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that can be an issue too. It can actually, yes, that can be an issue. If a man, so so for a man to orgasm every time, um, if they don't and they don't and they don't and they don't and they don't, and let's say you're holding it back because you want to pleasure the woman, but you have to eventually oh, you have to let it come out. to a climax, especially yeah. for health reasons. But That's also, also, I mean, it doesn't make women feel good when their men don't orgasm, right? right? So it's like, it's yeah. like you, women almost feel, oh, I'm okay. I tell you ahead of time, I'm not going to. You know, I'm yeah. gonna hold this one right here. Yeah, yeah. Cause I need it, to come. I need to come back for two and three, <laughs> and that's gonna be today. And so when, then I'll I'll pick and choose when I'm ready. <laughs> now you, you have to have that. Listen, you have to have that kind of confidence for real. Like, you have to have that kind of confidence, and you yes. have to know what you're doing. Um, and you gotta take your time. You know, mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a speed race. So no, um, no, foreplay yeah. is so very important because. Yeah. Women cannot orgasm if they do not have, if their oxytocin is not at a specific level, mm -hmm. right? It's not at a specific level. So yeah. you have to make sure that as a woman, especially, we need foreplay. So guys, <laughs> if yeah. you are a quick orgasmer, is that even a word, orgasmer? I don't um. know. <laughs> if, you, if you do that quickly, then I would advise you to have long foreplay yeah long foreplay yeah. so that your woman can have enough oxytocin mm -hmm. so that she's so ready by the time that you enter that boom it's like she's, yeah. she's right there you can get her there quicker so yes. you just take your time build up build up the um you know through the foreplay you build up all the expectations mm -hmm. and the blood flow mm -hmm. because the woman has blood flow down there too and the blood yes. flow is building not only on the clitoris, but also inside where all the nerves come down from the clitoris on the inside. Yes. And so you have to get that blood pumping down there. It's the same thing as the man's penis. Yeah. I mean, really, a penis and and uh, and and scrotum are just an inside out vagina. Yeah, that's that's very, very true. We all start off as women in the as the embryo in the embryonic stage. And then eventually we develop, you know, the pace when your chromosome, you develop into a man or a woman. But it's the same exact organs that are just reversed right right and yeah. someone asked can you have an orgasm without uh without ejaculating and yes yes you can and if you can learn that as a man that's very very awesome for your sex life you can orgasm multiple times a day your or orgasms actually become stronger longer larger so it's it's a really good thing to learn actually semen so, retention yes yeah, semen retention yeah, exactly semen retention. because you're not letting so once you ejaculate your testosterone is dropping yeah. by massive levels and you have to take time to rebuild that testosterone. Mm -hmm. So if you can actually hold it in, mm -hmm. then you don't actually release your life force energy. You don't right. release testosterone. So your testosterone doesn't, doesn't drop. That's why I don't release every time. You see how I keep these no no wrinkles. <laughs> see how I keep this face smooth. <laughs> Emmanuel Aquina <laughs> wants to know how to do the all wall. <laughs> well, <laughs> 
you have, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. Listen, when you, a guy gets in and just, just pound, 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 in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah, that, that feels good to a woman. But the secret really is to, to, to pound and penetrate, get a lot of penetration going. But then while she's enjoying that, then you come to an abrupt stop and then you have to grind. You begin to grind. <laughs> When you oh, grind it in there, <laughs> you get too happy over here. Uh oh, we might have to <laughs> end this thing. A little bit went out of. Anyway, <laughs> but you have to you have to grind in there. You have to tap the walls. You got to move side to side. You got to grind. You got to use your hips. You got to have some. You know, you got to have a little rhythm. <laughs> and then you move from the grinding back to the pounding, back to the grinding, and now you're just driving her crazy. You're building up the expectation, or you're getting the blood flow mm. going. Mm. And the next thing you know, you can control. You can tell her when she's going to have an orgasm. You can control it. <laughs> Mix it up. And then bit. you can, you know, but again, you have to have the staying power. You have to be willing to allow, allow your woman to orgasm and know that she's telling you <laughs> she's getting ready to have an orgasm. And that can't blow your mind. That you didn't lose. You lose it yourself. You have mm -hmm. to be able to sustain. Mm -hmm. And then you got to let her know, like, hey, I'm I'm here. You go ahead and do your thing. I'm, I'm This is for you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That builds up the confidence even more. The more confidence that you build in the woman, well, your ability to withstand and sustain the bigger and larger her organs are, and the more she's going to begin to have because then she can just let let go and be free to be herself and not be always fit in fear that she's going to have a letdown because that's what most guys do they just let you down mm, well see a lot of guys just want to get theirs and they don't really care they're in about and out boom, boom boom right and they don't, they don't didn't care. Split it. yeah they yeah. don't care about how women feel it's yeah. like hello like this matters to us too so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go back to these stats because I was getting flashbacks. Word, and it, was, it was a little much for me here. I had to drink some water, calm it down a little bit. <laughs> we got like a little half hour out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm hot. All right, is the air on? It's on. I <laughs> it's turned like it really on. Hot in here. Okay. <clears throat> um, eighty-one point five percent of women cited pain as the main cause wow. of unsatisfying big penis sex. Wow. Yes, it, it matters. And especially when you get into different positions, too. Yeah. I mean, if you're hitting a cervix, it hurts yeah. as a woman. Women yeah. will run away. Have you ever experienced a woman running away from you? Yeah. As, I yeah. mean, you're hitting something. You chase in there, them on the bed, shouldn't. but, you know, never, I never put anybody in those severe No, 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 no. No. Um, 57.3% of women who found big penis sex satisfying reported that they enjoy the feeling of being stretched. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, um, 7.22 inches is the average ideal penis length for women. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, we were talking about this. So that's earlier. the ideal ideal penis length for women, mm -hmm. but the average penis penis length, according to the study, or thousands of men, is five inches. Five or six inches, correct. So if you have seven plus inches, then you're more of the ideal for a woman. Yeah, According to this study, right. I mean, everyone has their own perceptions and yeah. their own opinions right. and they like what they like. Honestly, let's just be real. Let's be communicative. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's what matters in relationships. Yeah. With especially talking about your sex life. You mm -hmm. got to talk about these things. You yeah. have to. I mean, you can't be so uptight and, and weird about these conversations mm -hmm. because it's such a big part of your relationship. Yeah. It's a really big part of our relationship. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I like to go, okay? <laughs> we got a little bit of time. Um, but it's, it's a big... hope y'all listening because we got to leave soon. <laughs> it's a communication <laughs> issue. But you have to talk gotta, a lot. You have to talk. You yeah, have to you talk have to and be open. Yeah. Because, okay, and then they did this other study. I remember this from years ago when I was reading about this topic. Um, The most freakiest thing, like the most freaky, just 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 crazy, which you might think to be so crazy, um, fantasy that you might have, is not actually... That crazy. Mm. They found in a study, they literally did a study with about fantasies mm -hmm. and they found that that in this study, everyone was so nervous to yeah. reveal what their fantasy was. But at the end of the day, they what they thought it was going to be so much worse and mm. freaky than what it really ended up being. Right. Right. So exactly. be open. I mean, yeah. don't you want to experience all the fun and and feeling and and amazingness in this world that you can before you check out of here? Of course. It's, it's a big Big deal. Yeah, it's huge. It's yeah. a, definitely a gift because not all animals experience sex the way that humans do. Right. Some do, but not all. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that um, 
certain apes uh, experience of joy and sex, um, dolphins, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so, but, you know. I think dolphins are known to have sex over 100 times a day or something. Yeah, it's crazy. Lions, crazy. too, have sex all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, but there's, you know, a lot of animals, it's more just like a a thing to do so we can continue to, you know, procreate. Mm -hmm. And so you, you just enjoy it, you know, but become a master at it. Anything you do, become a master at it. Don't just play with everything that I try to do. I try to become a master at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, right? He's a master and at I, it. <laughs> well, thank you. I learned this, though. You know how I learned this? That, you know, that, that <laughs> fundamental concept of mastering everything. <laughs> yeah. I went to Cambodia mm -hmm. and I saw these monks cleaning and sweeping. Mm -hmm. And they were sweeping up and, uh, and they, you know, the, the, the guy who was in charge of these monks, I guess, I, I don't know what they call him. He was older than them. Mm -hmm. I guess he was their mentor or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But they were trying to explain to me that in sweeping up trash, they had to do it to perfection. You had to become a master at sweeping trash. Mm -hmm. You had to become a master at taking up the garbage, a master at cleaning the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And they lived their life predicated on one sole purpose, mm -hmm. becoming a master at every task that they have to take on. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, that's incredible. If I start trying to become a master at every task that I take on, mm -hmm. how much how much better am I going to be at everything that I do? Yeah, exactly. And so I took on that challenge. Yeah, <laughs> you're a master. We're masters over here, guys. You have masters. to become the master. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. don't be afraid of things either, because right. on the other side of fear is greatness, right? So don't be scared. Do mm -hmm. whatever you know. Yeah. Experiment. Do your little thing things. You know, it's just. It's, it's an exciting world to really, really dip into when yeah. you are open and honest with mm -hmm. your partner. Right. Yeah. And you have to understand something. So based on what we just read and all these case studies of thousands and thousands of people, mm -hmm. roughly it's still almost about 50%. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the stats we just read, you guys, Yeah. 50% matters, 50% doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're going to have the smaller percentage where somebody just has some type of a birth defect and there's nothing that can be done for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some things you can do, no matter what size you are, if you are having some issues or difficulty, yes. which we can talk about as well. There is. Women, if you like a really, really big one, <laughs> uh, I would advise you and challenge you to do a lot of Kegel exercises and even get, get you some jade eggs. Get you a jade egg and wear a jade, jade egg during the day. Um, that really, really strengthens muscles down there and it really helps with lubrication. A lot. If you're dry down there, jade eggs work like a charm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so let's see. Here goes some some of the supplements. Oh yeah. So some supplements that men can take to help uh, continue to keep yourself having very good blood flow, which is very important, obviously, and also in some of the, in some cases increase your girth, which mm -hmm. is important for some women, right? So L-arginine is an amino acid, which is a building block of protein. It's a vasodilator, which means it vasculates. It allows Basal more dilator, blood to flow through yeah. vasodilator. It allows more blood to flow through the through the through the um, yes. uh, blood vessels. It right? opens up. Well, it opens it, op up the blood it opens vessels. them up so more yeah, blood yeah. can more flow blood through can vasodilator. Mm -hmm. Meaning it can help open up the blood vessels. In theory, this could increase blood flow to the penis and help produce an erection. Yes, L-arginine. Yeah, L-arginine. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, DHEA helps create sex hormones, including testosterone and estrogen. Natural DHEA levels decrease as a person gets older, which may cause a decrease in sexual function. Mm. So that's a good thing. If you're low in testosterone or low in estrogen, that'd be a good supplement for you to take. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, that some women suffer this situation as they get older, that they lose their sex drive. Mm. And, you know, this is sometimes when they're in their uh, late 40s early 50s. Mm -hmm. And so you should consider consider trying some DHEA and see if that helps. Mm -hmm. Ginkgo biloba may increase blood flow to the penis, which could help improve sexual desire and counteract uh, erectile, erectile dysfunction. That's pretty interesting because ginkgo biloba is very good for the brain. Mm -hmm. Well, it increases blood flow. So yeah. it increases blood flow to the penis, not only, but mm -hmm. it increases blood flow to the brain as well. Right. And what does blood do for everything in your body? It mm -hmm. carries nutrients. It mm -hmm. carries whatever your body's need and that specific organ or that specific place. Mm -hmm. That blood brings all the nutrition to those areas. Right. So you need to have good blood flow. Mm -hmm. It's so very important. 
Yeah. Well, I was taking ginkgo biloba for for decades, hmm. just trying to help my brain. Oh, I got a good side effect, guys. <laughs> side effect. Good side effect. <laughs> okay. I can hear one of those commercials. Side effect of ginkgo biloba is extended erections. <laughs> <laughs> prolonged sex you know. <laughs> i can hear those uh, <laughs> i can hear one of those those disclaimers at the end uh if it was a farm yeah. you know pharmaceutical mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> yohimbine the main component of african tree bark is a traditional aphrodisiac so yohimbine is it called yohimbine or is it yohimbi 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 I, i've heard it called be called yohimbi before. Yeah. i don't know if it's pronounced i don't know i don't know but yohimbi yohimbine your home bean. I don't know. <laughs> Get the beans, okay? With the yo in the front because uh, it's, aphrodisiac. it's aphrodisiac. So yes. it gives you that urge to mm -hmm. want to be sexually engaged so yes. or sexually engaged someone. So mm -hmm. uh, your himbi, if that's the way you pronounce it, that's African tree bark. So I believe it works. I guarantee because I'm <laughs> you already know what's happening over there. They put you in the, <laughs> in the African bullfrog mood because you're, you're locked down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ginseng <laughs> is a popular home remedy. Certain chemicals in this plant may promote the relaxation of the body's smooth muscles, helping produce an erection. Ginseng? Mm, ginseng. Oh, I love ginseng. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I eat ginseng by the bowl, yeah. raw ginseng. Uh, I Wait, that's uh, ginger. Oh, ginseng. ginger? Yeah. Oh, ginger. it's ginger. Okay. I'm not yeah, eating, yeah, okay. I'm not eating ginseng like that. Okay. <laughs> you know that. I'm you like, God, dog, I'm getting all these side effects. <laughs> Yes, baby, you get the side effects. Thank you. Let's keep taking all this, okay? okay. I'll make sure all this is in the little collection I give you in the next. All right. Uh, horny goat weed. Yes. You can buy that at most healthcare locations, healthcare stores. Horny goat weed is a, a traditional remedy for increasing fertility. They call it horny goat weed because they used to actually give this to goats when they were trying to get the goats to mate. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why they call it horny goat weed. It really was something that was given to to goats to, you know, farmers would give it to the goats so that goats would mate more yeah. and produce more goats. Oh, man. I didn't I know that. Yeah. So uh, it obviously works. That's interesting. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Look at this. A strong pelvic floor enhances rigidity during erections and helps keep blood from leaving the penis by pressing pressing on a key vein. In a British trial, three months of twice daily sets of Kegel exercises, which strengthens these muscles, combined with biofeedback and advice on lifestyle changes, um, it helps erectile dysfunction in mm. men. Wow. So twice daily for three months, guys, mm. try it and see what happens. Wow. Get back to us. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Yes. So yes. we bring the knowledge. We joke around and have fun, but we bring the knowledge. No, there's this is knowledge. Yeah. This is all knowledge. Mm -hmm. And 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 guys, you're not a clone. He's not a clone. Yeah. Just because he's he talking about this. sex, he's not a freaking clone. Okay. Every and, we're fucking human. I'm sorry. We're human over here. <laughs> and, and like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> enlightenment comes in all forms. Yes. And I told you guys before, if you've been watching for a while, I can talk about any topic. Yeah. I can talk about Physics, sexuality, mm -hmm. sciences, mm -hmm. ancient civilizations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, metaphysics. It doesn't matter. I could talk, I could talk with any topic. Here's the thing. Okay. So, so let's say someone knows everything about ancient civilizations. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yet, yet you know nothing, nothing about sex, nothing about anatomy, nothing about how this vessel works. So you're walking around, I'm not saying you personally, I know what you mean. but you're walking around super unhealthy within your system. Don't know nothing about sex. Don't and it, it's hard for your penis can't, to get hard. Yeah, can't you know? satisfy your woman. Exactly. But you got all this ancient civilization but you got knowledge. All this knowledge. You what got good all is this it? knowledge, right? <laughs> <laughs> what good is it? What exactly? Yeah, you gotta teach people. We're here to teach you everything. Yes. Everything we possibly can. Yes. The stuff that nobody wants to talk to you about, mm -hmm. the stuff you can't ask anybody about. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm open, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about <laughs> it. Just, yeah. You can't uh you, you have to, you know, you have to be a master at everything. You can't be just a oh, one sided. Oh, I I'm I'm a spiritual expert. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how's your sex life? Uh, right. I mean, these are these topics that we talk about on this show specifically on biohack your best life. I mean, these are important subjects to be happy and live fulfilled. Yeah. You can have all the knowledge in the world, which is great to have all the knowledge in the world, but 
Let's live a fulfilled life. Let's yeah. enjoy ourselves while we're here. That's what this whole thing is about. Bring heaven to earth. Exactly. And having a great sexual experience is mm. part of bringing heaven to earth. Okay. You can literally touch heaven in an orgasm. You can. You can become enlightened. There are women that literally get these deep cervical orgasms. That's the deepest, most mm -hmm. powerful orgasm that you can get as a woman. It's mm -hmm. called a cervical orgasm. And you will literally, if you're not enlightened already, boom, your energy, poof, it shoots up and you literally see source. It's the same effect as taking ayahuasca, ayahuasca or any of those MDMA. other MDMA. Yeah. You literally can get there. You can get there with, with yeah. this <laughs> right. with orgasm, with these feelings. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's just, so much knowledge yeah. that that is in this world. Why not touch on every part of it? Mm -hmm. So just right. because we touch on these subjects that are a little cringy for a certain people, I mean, <laughs> it well, doesn't you have mean to, that you, you have know. to be aware of fanat. You have to be always be aware of fanaticism. Yeah, and you have to be aware of people that are susceptible to fanaticism. And unfortunately, in the conscious community, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that are already on the edge. Yes. And information that they're taking in, they're taking in too much. They can't process it fast enough. So they mm -hmm. become fanatics about everything mm -hmm. or the shape of planets. Uh, they become fanatical about clone people. Mm -hmm. Gucci man is a clone. Nobody's cloning no damn Gucci man. Get that garbage <laughs> out of your head. Nobody's going to spend $2.3 billion to clone Gucci man. It just ain't going to happen. So and so's in the Illuminati, you know, and all this kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> Um, we got, we got a, there's no black people in the Illuminati. Stop with the black people in the Illuminati thing, please. It's a very small club and, and y'all ain't in it. Okay. Stop. So we, we got, you know, it's, it's a little embarrassing sometimes to hear so many people making these outrageous claims. Mm. It just makes you look like your IQ is lower than a rock. Yeah. And so you, you gotta stop yourself. Realize, realize when you get ready to say something that might be really stupid and use your inner thoughts. To, don't use the outside voice. Don't use the typing voice. Keep that in your brain and process it a little longer. Yeah. And see, before I say this and before I type this, <laughs> let me just think for a minute. Oh, no. Does this make me look like a complete idiot? It's just, it's just or do I look like a normal person? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Fanaticism is everywhere. And if you take consciousness to fanatic levels, it's the same thing as being involved in a religion. Oh, you know what? I mean, that's what that's what I've seen in this industry. Unfortunately, I, I have not been in this conscious community very, very much or very long. Right. I was in real estate. I was in modeling other things. But when I came into this community, to be honest, just from a, a newcomer. Right. It's like these are the most unconscious people. There's a lot of that unconscious people experience. It's a lot. In this. The people this at the, the some of the people community. at the highest levels, people who run these conscious events and this and that. Yes. They don't pay you. They steal. They, they do this. Steal, all this crazy they, it's stuff. All this, this. They use you. Yeah. They use. I mean, it's yeah. just. It's really, really unfortunate. Yeah. And they're the ones that are talking about. Oh, they got Billy. He's a clone. He's a clone now. <laughs> There's one I guy mean, made a whole TikTok video because I used to have a gap in my teeth. My teeth were gapped from the time I was a little tiny kid. My, there's pictures of me as a kid in my documentary, <laughs> smiling. I got gaps in my teeth. I had big, wide gaps in my teeth. I got braces. Yeah. I wore braces for years. Uh -huh. I'm on interviews on Gaia TV with the braces in my mouth. Mm -hmm. This guy makes a whole video that goes viral. Then when he went to <laughs> the, what did he wear go? I went to the Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon. They got him. They got they me. And they, him. <laughs> they took him and brought him back with perfect teeth. <laughs> no, I got these teeth after wearing years of braces, re which reshaped my jawline. And then after that, I still wasn't happy because American dentists, are they're, they suck. Well, they are just stuck in old dentistry. Which they're not using, yeah, they're not, they're not using any technology that's going to really get you to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I went to Columbia and I got with some real orthodontists that took care of me mm -hmm. and gave me this Hollywood smile. Mm, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> okay. Ain't nobody took me nowhere and got me nowhere. It's called orthodontist. Have you ever heard of that? So we got to be careful, guys, with all of this, this psycho babble, man. Come on. Let's just stop with, stop with the foolishness. Stop getting... <laughs> If you see me do like this, I'm standing up like this or something, or I got my hands down and I'm just chilling. This doesn't mean Illuminati. <laughs> I'm sorry. These are mudras. These are powerful yeah. mudras. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Stop it with the foolishness. We gotta... I remember when I first met you, the people that I was with, they were like, oh, my God. Look at his hands. Look at his hands. Illuminati <laughs> confirmed. I mean, you can't walk around the street saying this to people. For God's <laughs> sakes, come on. 
You look like clowns. No, they're going ham on the, the post that he just put up. Yeah. They're going ham while you were clones. They, oh, they got him. He's talking they about penises. <laughs> sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to, you know, I got to vent every now and then because, you know, I got to take a lot of this <laughs> nonstop, you know. Black clone. Who the hell is going to invest money in cloning a black man? Number one, it ain't going to happen. We have that. We don't have that much value on the global platform. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. If I'm in a foreign country and and I get in a situation, I call the embassy. They're probably going to hang up on me. I had a situation that yeah, kind of opened they didn't help nothing. They ain't help nothing. I was calling the embassy and I was showing the people. I was like, I'm talking to the embassy. The embassy on the phone like, what nothing we can do for you? I'm like, so I'm faking like they helped me. Well, yeah, that's right, exactly. You know. What I'm saying, and we got to take care of the situation. I'm talking to the embassy. The embassy done hung up the phone already. Remember that? Yeah, that was awful. But thank you, embassy. We got way. no value. So <laughs> listen, now I have my own value. I have value in myself. I understand mm -hmm. my true value, my God power. But what I'm telling you is to the elites and these people out here that run these systems and have the power to make these clones and all this kind of stuff that's spending mm -hmm. billions of dollars on it. They're not cloning Billy Carson. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. They're spending that money on themselves. You gotta be kidding me. Buddy. <laughs> well, if you are a clone, I like I like Listen, I clone. wish I had a couple of clones. You know how much more I can do? Oh man, I know. I wish I had some clothes. Oh <laughs> man. Goodness. Goodness. Seriously. Be, it would be phenomenal. Said, some guy has said that you should wear like not suits often. I, I think you look really nice in this sweater, to be honest. You like wow. It? Yes. You like it? Okay. You look right, real see. fine. I got, little, you know, got my, my cartouche hey. <laughs> from Egypt, you know, my yeah. cartouche. You know, I got my little Rolex on, you know, my little yeah, Daytona. Gold. Okay. You know, Doing it. I'm matching a little bit today. You know? Yeah, I see. I'm playing around. You both got bit. black on. I'm yeah. repping the 4BK. <laughs> oh. I got my, my sun and my moon earring on, which is yeah. actually a set because right is, is this represents Right side represents male, right? Mm -hmm. Left side represents female. Mm. So um, oh, nice. giving and receiving, oh, right? Right it. side is giving, left side is receiving. Yeah. If you have a blockage on your right side, that means that it's hard for you to give. If you have a blockage on your right, left side, it's mm. hard for you to receive. Mm -hmm. These are all, it all matters, right? Yeah. Moon, lunar is represents woman. Mm. Sun, man represents you. Know, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. yeah. Just a little. A little, little spice there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Any, I got to show a commercial oh, okay. before we end because we're, we're going to go right back. But okay. I got to show you, we have the Forbidden Solutions for Humanity. It's a roundtable powwow. It's a roundtable discussion between 19 Keys, Dr. B, yes. Mike Rashid, and me, Billy Carson, coming up in just a few days. Mm -hmm. And it's free. Let me let you guys watch this quick clip, this quick uh, one-minute clip, and check it out. It's nice, too. For the first time ever, four world-renowned thought leaders have come together under one roof to discuss and bring forth the solutions that will reshape the future of humanity on this planet. 19 Keys, Mike Rashid, Dr. B. Sirius, and myself, Billy Carson, have all come from different backgrounds and different perspectives, but we all have one common goal. We want to provide solutions that will change the world. Witness us four men bring the solutions to humanity, and this event is gonna create a paradigm shift on Earth. We will be bringing palatable solutions that can be acted on and will create opportunities for change that will be long lasting. This event will be free as long as you subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge TV, you can watch it. Even if you're not a subscriber, all you have to do is get the free trial and watch it anyway. This mind-blowing roundtable discussion is available on eventbrite.com. So click the link because space is limited. That's a fire commercial. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's amazing. Matt that did an amazing job. Super. With that. Yes, you did, Matt. Yeah. Big up. Shout out to Matt. <laughs> so listen, that's the Forbidden yeah. Solutions for Humanity. It's coming up a live stream exclusively on Forbidden Knowledge TV. You can register on Eventbrite for free. And if you want to watch it for free, you just get the free trial. It's a three-day free trial. You can watch it for free. If you're already a subscriber, congratulations. You'll be able to watch this. And it'll be streaming in 4K, high quality. A three-hour, three-hour talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. We're not focusing on the problems anymore. We're going to start a new paradigm shift. We're going to start manifesting solutions by talking about them and getting everybody thinking about solutions. Everybody's going to become uh, uh, completely, uh, you know, thinking about like, what can I do to fix this? What can I do to fix that? How can we do this? How can I connect with somebody who has a solution? When you start thinking about the solutions, that becomes the manifestation reality. 
Right now, we all, we're always focusing on the problems and the issues. And so what has happened? All we have are problems and issues all around the world. But what if we start having roundtable discussions and panel discussions about solutions and we make that viral? Yeah, exactly. And we make that the next thing that happens where people just think about solutions. Oh, problem? Oh, how can we fix it? When your mind instantaneously go from problem to how can we fix it, now you flip the switch. Now all it takes is conscious action and you're going to get the manifestation. So conscious thought backed by action equals manifestation. So when we switch that, when we take that, hit that switch and convert the way we think about things, we then have the capability of changing our reality by being a co-creator in our reality. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole thing is about. This is the very first of many Forbidden Solution Talks. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. You guys are going to be in the same room. It's not going to be like a, a four screen Zoom meeting. It's right. going to be them sitting in the same room having this conversation. So, you know, when you're together and you film something in person, it's much more yeah, emotional. Better energy. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we feed over each other. It's going to be February the 5th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. February the 5th, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Three amazing hours on a live stream. Make sure you register. I'll drop the link in the comments one more time. It's on eventbrite.com if you don't see the link. But it's on eventbrite.com. Just type in Billy Carson. It'll pop right up. Yes. All right. So make sure you sign up ASAP and send that link to somebody. Get them to sign up and watch it as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we want to touch on with the, the podcast? Because I do want to talk about a couple things in the company. But is right. there anything else that, that you can think of that matters with does size matter? <laughs> I think we covered it. We gave them we a lot of case a lot studies. Of yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty much 50 50. 50% 50 say yes, 50% say no. Mm -hmm. We have a very small percentage that have a birth defect. There's nothing that can be done about that, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and we covered the different uh, herbs that can be taken, supplements that can be taken mm -hmm. to help enhance what you do have. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we're good now. Yeah. I think yeah. just to just really. My last thought is is really just pay attention to your partner. Pay attention to what the needs of your partner are. Um, if you're in a relationship with somebody, I don't one night stands, you know, just do your thing. <laughs> but but if you are in a in a partnership and a relationship with somebody, just pay attention to what your partner likes. Mm -hmm. And you can just micro movements. You can literally read someone by mm -hmm. micro movements. Just yeah. be very perceptive of your the your partner's reaction to different things and then be mm -hmm. open communication is communication, everything communication everything the more yes. you communicate the better it will be for you for mm -hmm. everyone involved yes yes yeah and you know what it's just got a little weird let's touch on this just for a second so back in the day it was different than it is now right it was way different when when women talking about sex men talking about sex it was way different it was like the men hunted the woman and then the woman was like very i don't know just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's the women that are hunting the man and like, yeah. what up though? You know, <laughs> <laughs> let me get a piece of that. <laughs> like it's changed a lot. It has kind of flipped, but a lot of it has to do with the hypersexuality in TV and music. Music. Music, uh, music is a plays a huge part in sexuality. Yes. And uh hypersexuality and hyper hyper crime. Yes. Is plagued uh, our society. <laughs> severely yeah severely it and has. so what you're seeing is a result of a lot of these really Crass. incredible female rappers their their skill is unbelievable and yeah. the way that they can uh you know lyricize and and, and their talent mm -hmm. but the lyrics that they're putting out which are being written for them in most cases it's not what they wanted to say i mean they've even openly said that i yeah but i don't believe that well no second. listen but you have to understand they can say no yeah. i understand that they can say no however they take in the paycheck so they're going to wrap them yeah and uh, underneath that contract, they're gonna they're gonna spit those lyrics if they sign that deal, and now they ain't stuck in it for three or four Everybody years. Got decisions though. You can say no. You got decisions. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, my point that Mostly, I'm making yeah, yeah, the yeah, point yeah. that I'm making is this: is that these lyrics are being force fed into society from people behind the scenes, people behind the veil, people the higher ups wearing the ten thousand dollar suits that you'll never see. You'll never know their names. You'll never know who they are. You won't know where they live. You won't never see them on a commercial. Mm -hmm. You never see them on the Forbes list, even though they should be. These are the people that are hypersexualizing the world and creating a situation that is um, is kind of you know getting out of control. The balance is is off. We got to bring the balance back. The balance wasn't wasn't fully there back then, and now it's it's flipped completely the opposite way. We have to come to some type of a homeostasis, some type of a balance where um, you know it, it's not hypersexualized. But we don't also devalue or 
are afraid of sex either because yeah. we're it's a sexual messy. civilization. The, the comedian, we went to this comedy show the other weekend and the, even a comedian talked about this. They mm -hmm. were like, I can't even date a, a young girl because these young girls scare me. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Pretty aggressive. <laughs> Very aggressive. Yeah. And women didn't used to be aggressive like that. I really, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree that it is the, the over hypersexualization and, mm -hmm. and, but I mean, wow, it's just, it's way, <laughs> way different. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting way out different. there. Yeah. It's getting out there. Yeah, it is. But we, we will, <laughs> as with anything, it, it, you know, it's just it's, back. It's, it's like a cycle that's up and down. What do you think WAP meant? Can you tell him? It's so no, funny. I'm not gonna tell him. That's too <laughs> so embarrassing. Funny, no. I was way off. I it thought was it way meant off. WAP. I, I'm not gonna tell you guys because it's too embarrassing. I thought it meant something totally different. <laughs> My nerd brain kicked in. I was making you did. You analogies nervous. dealing with other stuff. I wasn't even close. It's really funny. Yeah, I wasn't even I wasn't even in the same vicinity. No, no, no. It's not embarrassing. It's <laughs> no, just, I'm not it's no, just hilarious. Let's go. No, no, no. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> It's Fine. too embarrassing. It's hilarious, guys. All right. It's... Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I thought it meant whack ass pandemic. Okay. <laughs> whack ass pandemic. Because it came out during the whole pandemic, and I thought that that's what it meant. <laughs> whack. I never heard the whack song. Whack ass pandemic. And everybody was like talking about. I was like, oh, and, I, and then, then I found Our out. Our driver was dying. I when found he... out. I found out. <laughs> I found out months later. Dying. Oh man, it was so bad. <laughs> He's just hilarious. My son was oh, laughing at me. Yeah, it was really, really hilarious. <laughs> so freaking yeah. funny. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Um, last little thing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that threw me off <laughs> now. I need that all wall. Yeah, we're gonna get the all wall. Um okay, That's wait. Guaranteed. <laughs> I know. The dancing cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, can I get some? And he says we're dancing cucumber. <laughs> we tech, we we sexed each other every now and then. Anyway, go ahead. What are you gonna say? Yeah, you gotta keep it, keep it spicy, man. Yeah. Um, okay, so guys, um, manifest destiny workshop that is next yeah. weekend on Sunday from mm -hmm. 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, it'll probably go until eight. Yeah. And we have Tim Story uh as a guest host, not guest host, but he will be speaking. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, Tim Story is the the uh, mentor to Oprah, mm -hmm. to uh, Grant Cardone, Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. Mm -hmm. Um, this this man has really made it in the mainstream sense of of you know celebrity because you have to know something to be able to to advise these people that yeah. are so wise, like an Oprah, you know, mm -hmm. like a Robert Downey Jr. I you're, mean, not you just gonna, you're not just going to say, hey, Oprah, I'm coming over. Right, exactly. I'm just, you know, Robert, hey, uh, you know, make some time for me. I'm, stop, I'm stopping by your house today. Mm -hmm. These are very hard circles to get into. Exactly, exactly. And so, so if you're, you're going to get something. into those circles, you Mike have Tyson. to be yeah. elite. Yeah, Mike Tyson, yeah. you have to be very, very elite. Yeah. Smokey Robinson, Quincy, Quincy Jones. I right. mean, <laughs> he's right. worked with... These these A listers. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's very um, it's 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 you know he he's bringing a lot of knowledge. He's bringing a lot. He's going to be teaching with me, yes, and Elizabeth and Antonina mm -hmm. on January 29th at the Manifest Destiny workshop. Yes, yes. and it's going to be a mind blowing eight hour class, mm -hmm. and you get free replays for life. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, what are you going to be talking about? Just a quick little. Point. Oh man, listen, I'm going to be talking deep about the quantum physics and the metaphysics behind manifesting. I'm going to teach a lot of the new science that is going on behind the scenes, a lot of the new science that's been recently discovered mm -hmm. when you're trying to manifest something. I'm going to take all the woo-woo out of it. Yeah. You're going to understand how to manifest step by step, but also by understanding the process that is actually occurring when you're trying to manifest something. I'm going to teach you how to manifest something in real time while we're actually on the, in the manifestation class. I'm going to teach you all about your capability to see different realities existing at once based on future thought on a decision that you can make. And then I'm going to teach you how to change that decision and alter your future reality and pull in the one that you want to see. And this is all based on techniques that I've personally used. And these techniques are, guess what? Ancient. Mm -hmm. They come from ancient Sumeria, from the Enuma Elish and the Seven Tablets of Creation. And some of these Sumerian tablets they call themselves the ordainers of destiny. And I'm going to teach you the technique that they use to alter future realities in the third dimension and manifest the future that they particularly wanted based on the time that they reigned. And I've taken and adopted those the same ancient, super ancient techniques and incorporated them into my life. And I'm going to teach them to you. It's going to be a mind-blowing 
class. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's going to be amazing, amazing. Um, Nina, Antonina Ashford is going to be uh, doing a, an interactive um, trauma release exercise session with everyone that is a part of this workshop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be live and interactive. So make sure that if you've signed up for this workshop, you have a yoga mat or a towel or something that you can lay on. And you can actually do this exercise with Nina. She's going to be advising everyone on how to do it. And I would really suggest if you guys ever, I know you can look up on YouTube TRE exercise and you can look it up and you can do it yourself. Don't do it yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> have a licensed practitioner guide you through it at least the first time because mm -hmm. i tried to do it by myself this one time and i literally over i flooded myself mm. i couldn't calm down for literally it was over an hour wow. i was screaming crying convulsing popping mm. off the ground it was really scary mm. and horrifying and it was just a flood of emotion and a flood of trauma that i released and i couldn't i couldn't handle She's gonna it give you a guided trauma release, yes yes she will guide you and then from that guided trauma release exercise session, you'll be able to go home or you'll be home. You'll be able to do that exercise whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be diving in into the science on why this is important and why we all need to do this exercise occasionally because mm -hmm. our body holds on to trauma. We need to release it. So mm -hmm. I'm diving deep into trauma work. Um, you have to be able to get the stress and trauma out of your body to be able to manifest yeah. because otherwise you're not manifesting what's divinely for you mm -hmm. because you are not at a high frequency because everything is manifested. So if you got into a car accident, that's manifested. You manifested that in your reality because everything in this reality is a manifestation mm -hmm. of thought process of previous times, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, presence is a whole different dimension and you can't be fully present present in this moment, unless you've dealt with your trauma, because if you haven't dealt with your trauma, you're coming to this present moment with a pre perspective of stuff that's happened to you. So you now have a judgment about what is in the present moment, which no one should have judgments about the present moment because mm -hmm. it just is right. It's just facts. Right. There's no opinion. Right. And when you reach a level of enlightenment, you don't have to judge people. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. that's really working out the stress and trauma from your body. And right. mind and energy. So I'll be diving deep into that. That's going to be incredible. You, yeah. just brought, you brought something to mind when you talked about that, that I saw Bob Proctor talk about. He showed a hourglass like this, right? And he's talking about the fact that as you see the sand pass through the glass, you're now, this is all the past. This has already happened. This down here is time that has passed. You can't go back to the past. You can't engage the past. If you're focusing on the past, you're missing what's most important to you. Mm -hmm. This information here, this is the future. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you how to see the future, how to see the one that you want, so that by the time the future gets here to the middle, this is the moment of now. Mm -hmm. How you'll be able to access the future that you preset for yourself to meet you in the moment of now. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of what we're going to be teaching in the Manifest Destiny Workshop. You don't want to miss this class. I'll Absolutely. drop the link in the chat one more time. If you can't see it or, or find it, just go to eventbrite.com and type in Billy Carson. It'll pop right up. Yes. Do not be a victim of your past. Be a director of your future. Exactly. I put that on Twitter today. I'll I love retweet. that. That's beautiful. I need to retweet that. That's powerful. <laughs> I like that. Tweet, drop a little knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I forgot this other thing too. So yeah. guys, um, as going back to the subject that we talked about today, um, grounding, right? Grounding is so extremely important because, um, because it increases blood flow and it helps with blood viscosity. So if you have very, really, really thick blood, which Billy, actually, when you I first met it. him, you paste it. Oh, oops. I'll take it. You did. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to talk it too, too much. Um, yeah, Billy, you had really thick blood when I first met you mm -hmm. and you had a ton of pain at night because you would be stagnant, right? Laying down in a bed and mm -hmm. it would be so painful after a while because that stagnation of the fluids within your physical body causes pain, causes mm -hmm. inflammation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have, you know, the right blood viscosity, then that can cause massive amounts of pain. It can mm -hmm. cause erectile dysfunction, which you did not have. Thank goodness. <laughs> did not have that. You did not have that. But I did have <laughs> the body pains from laying down. Yes. Yes, you did. You would get yeah. up and scream pain. To jump around, I have yes. to jump around and get my body moving. Blood flowing again. She was exactly. a, she was my witness. She's seen this, and then yes. she started grounding me, and yes. all that went away. It all went away, and he yeah. didn't even believe me. So there is no no um, placebo. placebo. Yeah, I didn't believe it would work, and it actually worked. And I 
So that's how I knew how good it really was. Yes. When something works when you don't believe it's going to work, mm -hmm. that's that lets you know it really does work. And yeah. I was like, I can't believe this really really works. Yes. Oh, I was just taking it to keep her quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. But, hey, it worked. So thank you, babe. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, no, we posted a video about grounding today. And a lot of people are like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, there's over 30 peer-reviewed case studies, over $25 million thrown into proving the science behind grounding. Yeah, okay, science. Proving the science behind it. Anyone that has taken my advice and gotten the grounding products. They've all messaged me. Their yeah. lives are different. It's changed. We're not supposed to be disconnected from the earth. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And if yeah. you have erectile dysfunction, get you some grounding products because that's going to help your blood flow mm -hmm. to the area. So it's it's major, major, major. Mm -hmm. It could be it could fix your issue if you have erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Yes. Grounding, very, is, very is, grounding is amazing. And it's just, an, it gives the body, your body, the ability to heal itself. Yeah. And we all should heal ourselves. Yeah. Our bodies are so intelligent. Mm -hmm. So very intelligent. Each yeah. cell is just, it's, it's, it's a fractal of this universe. Mm -hmm. It's a fractal of our bodies. Each, yeah. each cell has organelles, right? Mm -hmm. We have organs. Our cells have organelles. Yeah. I mean, literally, we're, it's the same thing. We're just a bigger fractal of... of That's all we are. Everything is fractals. Everything is fractals. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Grounding absolutely works. Mm -hmm. So if you guys live in a cold state, there are grounding products that you can get. You can sleep on a grounded pillowcase, which helps with migraines. You can, um, you know, work on a grounded mat. So you're when you're working on your laptop. You have a grounded yoga mat. Yeah, I have a grounded yoga mat. I've been doing yoga outside and stretching in the mornings. It's beautiful. I love. I it. love taking pictures while she's doing the stretching. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> so I just sit there and. <laughs> <laughs> Down so, dog. Here it's we so go. cool because <laughs> I'm on the second story and I'm disconnected from the earth. But because of my grounded yoga mat, I can connect direct and still get those beautiful negative ions that our bodies need. Right. Right. Directly from the earth. Exactly. Because so, the house is grounded. So you plug into the grounded outlet yes. and the yoga mat's connected to that. Yep. And you're literally touching. It's like touching the ground. It is exactly. It's almost, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. The same thing. You're just your body is taking in electrons. Mm -hmm. That's all grounding is. Yeah. Is your body taking in negative ions, electrons. Mm -hmm. right. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please do the research on anyone that thinks I'm talking all this woo-woo because I don't talk woo-woo, not ever. If it's not backed by scientific research, I'm the least woo-woo right. person that you well, don't what, need, what, so. what do you what certificate did they give you from Harvard? It's cell biology, it's focusing on mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm working on my neuroscience class right now. So. Yes, you are. I mean, I'm a pretty studied. We person, always have the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> we always have the receipts. I'm pretty studied. Yeah. 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 This has been a great show. Yeah. yeah. It has been a great show. I got show. to rant a little bit. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did rant. But listen, I have a new a new one coming up soon. I'm going to rant on these uh, these electric cars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so getting ready to go in on these electric cars like you wouldn't believe. And I'm bringing the science <laughs> and I'm bringing the receipts with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of yeah. you may not may not want to hear what I have to say, but I got to say it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be powerful. There's a bunch of people in here calling you all wall Billy now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> That's going to be your name, all wall Billy. Oh, well, well it's it could be worse names. <laughs> it could be worse names out there. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that one. I'll call you all wall Billy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that all wall. Okay. Speaking of, sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> we got to get out of here, guys. Uh, all right. It's getting too hot. Yeah. Anyway, anything else you want to say to the people? Um. Yeah. Just just join us on um on on Sunday. And uh, I had a girl once who told me she liked to be choked. So yes. Some women, okay, so then <laughs> just, just you mean you're reading a comment, <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm thinking, like, you telling me this now. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on over here? I personally like a little bit of choke action, choke but you don't want to yeah. choke until the person don't is about to somebody. pass out and die. This happened to my girlfriend, she was getting choked, and this, this guy was, you know, she's a big freak, she likes sex a lot. And um, she was having sex, and this guy was choking her, but it was too much. Oh, no. And she got really mad. So she got, like, pushed him off and then left and was, like, super well, mad about it. She didn't die. I know. You can get, you got to yes. control yourself. You man. have you to control crazy. yourself. But choking can actually enhance orgasms, too. Yeah, it will. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's just a little boop. But don't choke to, to death, okay? <laughs> don't kill nobody. Don't take don't our advice. Yeah, no, no, no. We're not giving you we're any advice that. to go choke nobody. No, no, we're not. We not. Don't go choke nobody. He could choke me, but I don't. Let don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to us please <laughs> do not try this at home 
Remember, I'm a master. Consider spirit science. What's spirit science? Uh, spirit science. That's uh, well. That's a a, com- uh, a group that really started a movement called Spirit Science about a decade and a half ago, and it's talking about uh, connectivity with spirituality and and human consciousness. It's a form of spirit science mm. because what you're doing is you're tapping into the earth, which is an actual conscious being. Mm. And so the science aspect of it is using technology to connect to that because obviously if you're not if I'm sitting at this desk right now, there's no way I'm grounded. But if I have a grounded mat that my hands are sitting on top of, which we sell, mm-hmm. you can plug it into the grounded outlet. Now I'm directly connected to Mother Earth, directly connected, because there's a ground steel that goes from the ground into the earth from the house. Mm-hmm. And now I'm directly connected to Mother Earth's consciousness. Yes. And I'm mine and hers are synced. Mm-hmm. So it is a form of spirit science. Well, also, let me tell you, so so being connected to the earth and grounding, before I started grounding... I didn't care about the earth as much as I do now. Now, I always have been obsessed with earth and mother earth, and I've always respected the planet. That's just how I am. Mm. But after I started grounding and after Gabriel started grounding, I found that he was so mad when he would see any pollution on the ground. And that never Mm. used to happen before he started. Now, me, I'm connected to the earth to the point where I almost cried. You remember when we were driving behind that car that Mm. they were throwing stuff out the window? It was like a bunch of paper. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Oh my God, I wanted to crazy. get out and pop this leaf. It, it was bad. It was real, real bad. Yeah. I just, you know, you, you get become very real sensitive and very emotionally attached. attached to trees and everything. Yes. It's pretty interesting how it works. It is. Yeah. Very interesting. So grounding is very powerful. Yes, yes, All yes. right. Okay. We got to run. Anywho, yeah, we got to go do yeah. the all wall. Yeah, yeah, we got to run. <laughs> Until next time. All guys. right. <laughs> we got to go, guys. We're going to end this now. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank I want to see you all on the Forbidden Solutions yes. Roundtable Talk that we're going to have with 19 Keys, Mike Rashid, Dr. B Series, and me, Billy Carson, February the 5th. The link is in the caption of this video or this podcast. And we also dropped it in the comment feed many times. Mm-hmm. Make sure you sign up for free and join us for that three hour incredible powwow that's going to be the paradigm shift that's going to change the way people handle and look at situations. We're all going to become uh, people that look to provide solutions or search for solutions instead of focusing only on the problems. We're going to go from PTSD to PTG, from PTSD to post-traumatic growth. Mm. That's the way we're going to move forward as a society. And this is the very first of many to come. All right. We love you guys. We got to go. Till next time. Peace. Third (laughs) I love.